This is the Fluke ICTC-01A thermal camera for Android smartphones with a USB Type-C connector. Fluke also makes an iOS version, the TC-01B, with a lightning connector. I bought it online for around $350, but it doesn't seem to be from an official Fluke distributor. Here's the user manual with various languages and specifications of the camera. The packaging box only contains the manual, what seems to be a warranty card, and the camera itself, no pouch as advertised, so it's a minimalist package. The camera is quite small, made of solid aluminum with a minimalistic and premium looking design. It comes with a waterproof and dustproof case with an IP54 standard, theoretically ensuring durability over the long term. It's larger in size, maybe three times the size of the very small and quite popular Enfire P2 Pro camera. But it's the reputable Fluke brand that made me choose this camera. Now, I'm trying to connect the camera to my smartphone. Since my smartphone has a thick hardcover, I need to use a USB extension to connect it. I'm using a Lindy USB extension. To use this camera, you need to download the Fluke IC app from the Google Play Store. Every time the device is plugged into the smartphone, the installed app automatically opens. The app is simple but sufficient, though it's a bit buggy since it hasn't been updated in a while. One of its drawbacks is that there's about a 1 second lag within a 30 second time frame for some reason. But the longer it's used, the less frequent the lag becomes. Maybe because the camera needs some warm-up time. Also, for video recording, if it goes on for too long, it can crash the app, and the last recording might not be usable. Sometimes, the resulting video isn't as long as the actual recording. The thermal camera can detect heat traces left by body warmth, which might be useful for briefly seeing human or animal tracks. On the left-hand side, there's an icon to display images directly from the back or front camera of the smartphone. The second icon is for adjusting brightness and contrast. The third icon is for the focus area. The app will search for the hottest and coldest points within one area.
The fourth icon is for measurement calibration, and the fifth is for settings. Measurement distance seems to ensure more accurate temperature measurements when we input the correct distance from the camera to the object. This camera has a depth of field ranging from 25 cm to 5 m. The central point displays the temperature in the middle of the screen. While max min shows the maximum and minimum temperatures on the screen. The grid displays dividing lines on the screen. We can capture photos or videos from the camera, which will be saved in the smartphone's gallery. This icon on the bottom right is used to select the built-in palette according to our preferences. There are 15 built-in palettes that can be chosen to display images optimally. We can add an extension cable to view narrow and hard to reach areas, but unfortunately, this cable needs to be purchased separately, and it's somewhat rare in the market. Other thermal cameras usually include an extension cable. Unfortunately, the Fluke IC app can't manually change the screen orientation, so it's only in portrait orientation and automatically adjusts to the smartphone's position. It needs to be in the position as when the camera is connected to the smartphone without a cable to prevent the image from flipping. Hopefully, the next update can enable manual orientation changes.
One of the functions of this camera is to observe the operation of the heater in a 3D printer. I want to see if the heat is evenly distributed on the printer bed because sometimes, although rarely, ABS prints almost melt due to overheating. Thermal cameras cannot penetrate glass, so the glass door of the printer needs to be briefly opened. Here, it appears that the heat is evenly distributed, and there are no issues with the print results. So, that's a brief review of the Fluke TC01A with the Fluke IC app. It has quite a few functions that you can explore further online, such as detecting heat leaks in the walls or ceilings of a house, water pipe leaks, electrical loads on cables, or connectors to prevent electrical short circuits and fires. And of course, for identifying faults in electronic equipment. If you want to see how I made a bumper case and macro lens for this Fluke camera, check it out here.